Welcome to the Dementia Land Serial Podcast, a story for everyone who knows someone living in or near Dementia Land. My name is Suska, and this is my story. Mrs. Violet was sitting in a wheelchair, sipping through a straw her butter pecan insure. The balloon airheads Flo and Vita were at her side, carefully overseeing the concerns of the little lady and looking out for any possible danger or harm that might come her way. Louie and Al were close by. Without letting on or showing any notice, Violet lifted her eyes and fixed them on a strange man who was standing in front of her. She twisted her drinking straw, trying to remember if he was a man she should know, someone perhaps who was hidden in her memory's blind spot. Behind the man was Ellie, Mom's friend from church. Ellie came to the house for a visit. She brought with her a sweet-smelling violet bouquet and a box of almond cookies from the local bakery, and she also brought her father. Ellie's father was about Violet's age. His wife died four years ago. Although I told my mother about Ellie and her father coming to visit, she acted surprised when he walked into the room. She kept a close eye on the strange man and watched his head curiously move around the room, looking at the impressive collection of balloon characters that floated above all visiting guests. At first, these airheads swayed back and forth in order to get a better view of the visiting man, a movement initiated by the air conditioner's fan turning itself on and off. They were enormous creatures that brought a lightness to the room. They skated above everything hard and took all visitors away to a place where everyone is equally loved and flowers pick themselves. Ellie's father stretched his head high in the air as far as it would go with little concern for his bowed back. His eyes were open wide in order to take it all in. He gave each ballooned creature the proper amount of attention. And they in turn took him back in time when he lived with the treasure hunters and daring adventures only seen in movies. But when he got to flow and followed the ribbon down to the arm of Violet's wheelchair, something snapped inside his head and returned him to the old man he was. The fatherly man bent over and extended his hand and a bouquet of flowers to Violet. Oh, those sacrificial flowers, as well as his hand, hung in the air like a buzzard flying around in a desert looking for a place to dine. The room was silent. The little lady acted like she had packed her bags and left earth. The ballooned airheads on each side shook a little. Shoot. That's okay, honey. You gotta be careful. You can't just be giving your hand to every man that walks up in here. Whatever you decide, Miss Violet, we got your back. Something is happening here, Vita. This situation does not look good. Mm. Oh, Flo, he looks harmless. Come on now, Vi. Give me your hand. Nudge your hand out there just a bit. He ain't gonna bite you. I gave my mother a nudge on her shoulder, hoping she'd extend her hand for the shaking, but under her breath, she indicated she wouldn't and she didn't. Eventually, he pulled his arm back. Well, well, well. You are such an attractive lady. My daughter never told me you were such a a looker. Um, did he say looker? I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Hey! Move it back a little, sir. Don't smother that little lady. Miss Violet can see you. Her vision is just fine. And it improves even more if you just move a couple of feet away, okay? Flo, just float a little closer to Violet, just to be on the safe side. I'm trying to. I am trying to. How wonderful to finally meet you. My daughter told me so many wonderful things about you. My mother bit down on the straw and tightened her plated teeth into her gums and said nothing. The kind man introduced himself. His name was Murray. 
Violet turned her head slightly and sunk back into her chair. Under her arm, she covertly maneuvered the handles of her purse with a tight grip. I knew what she was thinking, but I dismantled those thoughts for my own sanity. After all, she adored Ellie, and her father seemed nice enough. A medium man, shorter than my father, and wearing an old newsberry tweed-like cap. His trousers were high, his back was bowed. Not sure if that was an impairment or an intentional gesture to get closer to my mother, who was considerably lower in her seating height. I moved five chairs around in a circle. The ottoman was in the center where a tray of goodies and fancy napkins were to be placed. The seat for Ellie's father I deliberately placed at a considerable distance away from my mother, who already put down the handbrakes on her wheelchair as if she were staking out a claim for her position and dominance over this visit. Here you go, Mary. You can sit right here. And Ellie, why don't you sit over there right next to my mom? Violet seemed a bit distracted. Something took over her attention. The dementias had already robbed her of her peripheral vision. I imagined for her it was like she were looking through two empty toilet paper rolls. Even with this impairment, she was intensely focused on something. She straightened her back and stretched her neck as far as it would go. Her eyes tunneled its way to the kitchen counter, where a stack of dishes was placed in preparation for Ellie's visit. It was the fancy china with ornate flower patterns and green deco trim. The best part was the inside of the cup. It looked as if it were delicately painted in liquid pearls, the same paint God used to brush the insides of abalone shells. Violet looked to the china pieces sitting on the counter and moved her lips in counting each cup and saucer, as if the count would be needed to match the number at the end of the visit. I kept on looking at her, and she looked me back straight in the eyes, a sign of a clear conscience. After her counting, Violet returned to our guests, and with confidence she slid into the ongoing conversation. She was exceptionally alert. She followed every word and cleverly responded to every joke. Her eyes were wide and bright and moved from Ellie to Murray with the ease of a gracious host. And then she spoke. And how's your boil, Murray? What boil? I heard it was a boil you had. Oh, the man sat there like a grilled fish on a bed of parsley. The room was quietly confused and held its air in place. Hold on, Vita. Stormy weather is ahead, girl. I got it, Flo. I'm getting ready. Once that AC fan turns on again, the draft can get me right in there, right in the middle of that boil. Mom, where did you ever get that idea? Oh, well, someone told me he had a boil on his buttocks. We all looked at Violet as if she were a riddle. My mother, for as long as I've known her, had never accepted being called into question, especially if its focused intent was to prove her wrong. And that was a rule that she was never going to surrender to the dementias. Violet just sat there with an absent-minded smile, giving out of an accomplished politeness. But it was too late now. Those words were let out of the stable, running willy-nilly without ownership. I specifically remember being told that it was in the buttocks area, and that ain't something you forget. I never had a boil in my entire life, and I certainly never had any kind of abscesses on my buttocks. Not a pimple or a pustule or a furuncle, or any other type of ulcerated sores. Oh, I can imagine how you must feel, having such a terrible thing like a big boil. Oh, we had a dog when I was little that I loved more than anything in the world. One day he ran out in the street and got hit by a car. I just didn't think I'd ever get over it. We all just sat there dumbfounded, watching our afternoon conversation being slaughtered. Now what in the hell is happening here? What is girlfriend talking about? Someone please rescue this little darling from herself. I'm sorry about your dog. 
Uh, We also have Mom's cabbage horns that I thought out this morning. You love my mother's cabbage horns, don't you? I regained my senses and moved quickly to the counter, where the thawed horns sat as a backup. Murray didn't like talking about boils or dead dogs, but had this sense about him to change the subject. He left the circle of confusion and walked to the window. Look at that bird over there on the lawn. It has golden eyes. Can you see him, Violet? Over there. Can you see his eyes? That's a Burroughs golden eye. Nope, you're wrong. That's a duck. Violet squinted forward in her chair. She moved a slight bit closer to the window, a gesture, she thought, that would show more scientific clarification and credibility to back up her sighting. Yes, I'm sure that's a duck. Violet used up all her conversation skills and elevated herself back into her chair. From that point on, the afternoon took on all the qualities of a storm's aftermath. Thank you for listening. Share this with a friend and see you next time. My name is Suska.